today, as I bring a message, I titled Power of Vision for Destiny Fulfillment. Somebody say it with me. The power of vision for destiny fulfillment. You know, you we catching your vision of your destiny from the book, from the word. When you encounter the word, that's why this is a series. You encounter the word last Sunday. Now, encounter with that word is going to bring you vision. Because vision, what is vision? Vision is a picture of your future in the mirror of the scriptures. It is the picture of your future that you have captured in the mirror of the scriptures everything don't wait until some until you go into a trance and you say you have an open vision don't wait until somebody said they've seen a vision for you you can choose you can have a vision of your life you can discover that vision by looking into the mirror of the scriptures in second corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 and he said and we all and we all with open face beholding in a mirror the image of god we are changed from glory to glory and we all with open face be holding like in a glass we are changed from what from glory to glory so the more you see the more you can become what you see of yourself determines what you become in your future when you limit your vision then you are limiting your destiny you have a big god there is nothing too 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 difficult for your god why do you limit yourself the bane of many is they limit themselves by limiting their vision if you have a small vision then you will have a small outcome because small begets small when you think big when you see big then you will act big many do what normally they are not capable to do and when they do it it produces it provokes great things happening in their life and you begin to wonder how could this person do this because he has chosen to do what others refuse to do taking big steps is what takes you to your high places why that is provoked by vision if you continue to see yourself as a mediocre as if you continue to see yourself as being limited then everything around you will be limited there is power in your vision no wonder in proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 it said where there is no vision the people perish where there is no vision destinies perish where there is no vision purpose is perished vision is what gives you speed for motion many have not lay hold on vision they don't have a vision of their future and they are going about in darkness they are going about in darkness doing what trial and error 
trial and error and many times it only leads to failure it only leads to disappointment it only leads to confusion in first timothy chapter 1 verse 18 he said concerning some they have let go of faith and they have let go of their conscience and hence they have made a cheap wreck of their destiny you know your conscience is the light of your spirit it's what grants you vision so when you forsake your faith you forsake your conscience which is the candle of your spirit that grants you vision many has made a shipwreck let me tell you something god cannot do beyond what you can see god will not do beyond what you can see god spoke to abraham in genesis chapter 13 verse 14 and 15 he said he took him remember he had promised him in genesis chapter 12 that i will make you i will bless you you'll be a blessing and through you shall the, the, shall the nations be blessed and thou shall be great but he realized he had just spoken the words to him until abraham is able to see it himself before he can actually become it i can say many things to you but until you see yourself being becoming it you will not your situation may not change from where it is many people come and receive the word but do not believe that that word is for them they're always thinking it is for their next neighbor it is for this person and that is why their situations remains the same god told abraham he said look to the east look to the north and look to the south he said as far as your eyes can see i will give unto you as far as your eyes can see brethren i want you to look beyond yourself i want you to look beyond your circumstances i want you to look beyond beyond your limitations don't look at your current circumstances look at where god is taking you look at where god is taking you remember what he said in romans chapter 8 verse 28 he said everything works together for good to them that love god and to them that are called according to his purpose he said for they that he foreknew he predestinated those he predestinated he has confirmed to be the image of christ and those he predestinated he has called those he called he justified and those he justified he has glorified so meaning whatever you have everything works together wherever you are at this point everything works together for you but there is a caveat there for those that love god it is not for everybody many people only love themselves many people only care about themselves many people only worry about themselves the love of god is far away from them many are just users of god when they come they get what they need they pray god blesses them now they are far away from god but if you watch it carefully those people the blessings does not endure in their life all things works together all things works together to them that love god whatever is your situation i want you to begin to see a picture of a, a future 
ahead of you. Begin to, to see a picture of a future ahead of you. There is, don't, don't, and don't think small. Don't see small. Don't use your current situation or your circumstances to dream. Joseph refused to, 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 to have small vision about himself. He dreamt, he dreamt big. He dreamt big. The first dream, he shared it excitedly with his brethren. But because his brethren are so limited in their thoughts, you, how can in this village, you think you're going to, people are going to bow. They were limited in their vision. But David, uh, Joseph refused to be discouraged. What did he do? He went ahead and dreamed bigger. Before, only 12 was bound for him. Now, 14 began to bow. <laughs> when people dissuade you, when you share your vision with others, don't be discouraged. Go and dream bigger. Go and think bigger. Begin to see more. Begin to, to, to see greater things ahead. Don't allow the, the, the discourage of men to shut your eyes to the dreams and the purpose of God for your life. Because people are always there to discourage People are always there to set you back. If they cannot achieve it, they will not want you to achieve it. If they have gone ahead of you, they want to press you down. And so, you have to be careful. Don't allow anything to take away your vision. There's power in what you see. The Lord spoke to Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 before I formed thee, Jeremiah I knew you before you came forth from the womb I already sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet to nations but this is my plan for you but my plan can never come to pass unless you are also seeing it the same way i am seeing it for you there's nothing i can do beyond what you can see about yourself this is my purpose this is my plan this is my destiny for your life you are preordained to be sanctified preordained to be a prophet to all nations and he told, ask him, in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10, he said, what are you seeing about yourself? What are you seeing about that, your future? What do you see? And thank God for Jeremiah. He said, yes, Lord, I can see the rod of an armor tree. I can see the world, see the picture in the world that you are sharing with me and God said thou are well seen and I will esteem my word to perform it I will esteem my word to perform it when you begin to see the same way God is seen concerning you you put God into action you you begin to see speedy motion and you begin to see speedy accomplishment and that shall be your portion in the name of Jesus remember this is a service of destiny encounter that God wants you to begin to see the picture each time you open the pages of scriptures it is like a mirror as you open that page begin to see the picture of your desired future somebody shout hallelujah in isaiah chapter 29 verse 11 it says the vision of all 
is like the words of a book and that is given to the unlearned and he said no I cannot open it and they gave it to the learned and he said I cannot open it many times many read the scriptures but they don't see themselves in it many study the bible but they don't have any revelation but there was an encounter with jesus in luke chapter 4 from verse 19 to 20 he he, he went into the into the synagogue and he opened the book the scripture and and he began to read and he began to read about himself in the picture in in the scripture and he came in verse 20 Jesus closed the book and he told them on this day is this fulfilled in your eyes and I got an understanding that revelation must proceed fulfillment until you catch a revelation a vision of what is written concerning you there cannot be fulfillment it it is there already but you need to catch a vision of it and what happened after he said that the eyes of the people that were there began to look at him differently they began to see him not just as joseph's son they began to see him now as the messiah and that was the beginning of the miracles he began because as he left the temple he began to heal the blind he began to 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 heal the sick he began to make the lame to walk miracles began to happen why because fulfillment has come with revelation Brendan, you must gain access to the vision of god for your life and he said the vision of all your vision my vision is in the words of a book when you catch a glimpse of it you begin to see fulfillment in your life somebody shout hallelujah Hallelujah. somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah but for every vision to be accomplished there must be there must be responsibility you must be willing to take what responsibility somebody shout hallelujah Hallelujah. in james chapter 1 verse 22 i hope we we brought our bible to church because we are so much dependent on the screen now the screen is not working we seem to be out of tune i hope you brought your bible to church i didn't need the bible i was quoting it i expected you to be following it with me as i was saying it here so if i may if i'm telling you what's wrong you say pastor no that is not what the bible says like the Berean christian we are so much dependent on looking at the screen now we forget to when we quote a scripture you open it to say is pastor saying the right thing or i'm just just bamboozling you guys so let's read james chapter 1 verse 22 let's start from verse 21 if you are there with me please read yes 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 amen 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 yes 23 
if anyone is a hearer of the word and and not a doer himself in the natural face in a glass that for 24 immediately forget what manner of man he was in verse 25 but whosoever look at into the perfect law of liberty and continues daring he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this man shall be blessed indeed somebody shout hallelujah so when you, you you saw the mention of the mirror each time you open the scripture it is like you are looking into the mirror and you are seeing the picture of your desired future you are seeing a picture of yourself you are seeing who you are it's like you standing in front of a mirror and you seeing your yourself in that mirror the same way when you look into the scriptures you are seeing your future in that scripture and there are steps there are things you need to do and those things are enabled by the Spirit of God for you to be able to accomplish them and that is what we'll be discussing next sunday what are the steps as ordained by the holy spirit how can you allow the anointing help you to fulfill the demands so that you can fulfill your destiny somebody shout hallelujah Jesus had to be empowered of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 10 verse 38, he said, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good, healing the sick, for God was with him. Jesus did what he went about. He did not sit. He took responsibility. But he took the anointing of God to grant him the grace and the willingness to be able to take the responsibility that is required. So next Sunday we shall be looking into that. Because this is a series. But at the end of this month, everything that is yet to be fulfilled in your life shall find fulfillment in the name of jesus every purpose of god that is in you that has yet to express itself begin to find expression in the name of jesus you will not leave this world without fulfilling your call to the utmost in the name of jesus God has called you with a purpose. He has called you for a glorious destiny. You will not live as a mediocre in the name of Jesus. I said in Isaiah chapter 29 verse 11. I want you to join me to read that too. Isaiah chapter 29 as we are about to round up. Isaiah 29 verse 11 I don't want to just quote it often which I did already I want us to see because as we round up as we take the communion we'll understand why we need this said the vision of all is like the words of a book that is sealed the 
one who can read, say, read this. Let, let me. 29 verse 11. Are you there? Let's, I want us to read it together. Are you, do you have your Bible? Amen. One, two, go. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is land, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot. For it is sealed. And the book, verse 12, is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. That is the situation of many. And that is why many are walking aimlessly, because the book is sealed. The book is sealed. They gave it to the learned. He said, I cannot open. They gave it to the unlearned. He said, I cannot open. Why? Because the book is sealed. But many read the Bible, but they read it as storybook. They read it as history lesson. They read it as, as just... Um, story they are not seeing themselves in the book because it is what sealed but let me tell you somebody came to unseal the book let's go to revelation chapter 5 verse 10 revelation chapter 5 verse 10 revelation chapter 5 verse 10 and we're going to read this together let's start from verse 9 revelation chapter 5 verse 9 want to go and the song a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and thou redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth forever. Somebody shout hallelujah. Jesus shed his blood so that he can open the book. Jesus came and shed his blood so that he can open the book. That every sealed destiny, every sealed destiny by this encounter today, as you partake of this blood shall be unsealed in the name of Jesus. Every life that is wandering in darkness, every life that is wandering in ignorance, every destiny that is perishing, as you partake of this blood of Jesus, I say you shall begin to find fulfillment in the name of Jesus. Let me share another scripture with us before we partake of the communion. In Matthew, Malison Toro Bozundara Mama, Leson Toro Bozundara Mama, Leson Tre, Malison Toro Bozundara Mama, Leson Toro Bozundara Malison Tre, Zundara Mama. Yes, Lord. God wants to open the seal. 
God wants to open the seal. And the seal shall be opened for you in the name of Jesus. Everything that has hindered you from knowing the will and the plan of God for your life shall be swallowed up even by this communion service in the name of Jesus. In the book of Matthew, I believe 20. Twenty-six, let's see. Yes. As now he said, and they, they were eating. Jesus took bread and blessed it and gave it to them, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. And he took the cup and he said, Drink ye, for this is the blood of New Testament that I've shed for you. That is not the scripture I'm looking for. Lord, open my eyes to see. Unveil, unveil every, take away every veil. Take away every veil. Take away every veil. In the name of Jesus. Male son to robo zundara mama. Le sentere zundara ma. Le sentere zundara ma. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you just rise up on your feet now and just begin to pray? Lord, as I partake of this communion, may the seal be open in the name of Jesus. May the seal be open in the name of Jesus. Lord, I shall partake of this communion. Lord, may the seal be open in the name of Jesus. Mason to Robozunara, Mama. Mason to Rezunara, Mama. Listen to me. Listen to Robozunara, Mama. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open the seal. Open my open the seal that I may partake of begin to see. Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. In Luke, let's open to Luke chapter 24, verse 30 to 32. Luke chapter 24, 30 to 32. Luke 24, 30 to 32. He said, and it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke and gave it to them. And what happened? And their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. When you 
stand before the communion table, it is an eye opener. You begin to grant, gain access to vision, to begin to see things. Every veil begins to drop off. Every confusion begins to give way to clarity. Every, every captivity begins to give way to your elevation. I want you to pray, Lord, as I receive this communion, let every seal let every seal that has hitherto kept my destiny sealed sealed be broken in the name of jesus and now once the seal is broken let my eyes now be open to begin to see the picture of my desired future the picture Of my future in the mirror of the scriptures. Thank you, everlasting Father. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. There is power, mighty. Please come and partake of the communion. There is power, mighty, in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power mighty in the blood, in the blood. In the blood There is power mighty In the blood Blood of Jesus There is power mighty In the blood of Jesus Christ There is power mighty In the blood Lord, we commit these elements unto you, that they become the blood and the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we partake of them, the seals are broken, and our eyes are opened. In the name of Jesus, we begin to see the full picture of our future in the mirror of the scriptures so that our future will not be ruptured in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. And we partake this in the name of the Lord Jesus Spirit. And the Father in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So take the bread and the blood of Jesus. And like we've been prophetically instructed, these fruits have been brought here to bring fruitfulness into your life and into your destiny. Because it came from a fruitful ground. So before you leave, make sure you take a piece and share with the members of your household. Because fruitfulness has entered into your home this day in the name of Jesus. And we receive this fruit with thanksgiving. And we ask, O oh Lord, that bless the hand that you have used to be the bearer of these fruits. 
that our life shall be a fruitful vine and everyone that shall partake of it shall be fruitful in all their endeavors that God will terminate every fruitless labor and will give unto us favor in the name of Jesus thank you king of glory for in Jesus mighty name we pray Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We give glory to God even for the word and for his servant. Just lift up your hands and thank God for his servant. Let's pray that God will continue to use him to speak to us. And that he will speak to us just as God has spoken. Father, we thank you for your servant. We thank you, Lord. For the privilege to be under his feet, O oh God. As you speak your word, we pray that your word, O oh God, Lord, will change us and will continue, Lord, to do great things in our lives in the name of Jesus. We receive the word God has spoken today. Lord, open our eyes that we may see you and understand the deeper things of God. As you say that you will show us great and unsearchable things. That we do not know. We give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together as we take our seats. Amen. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Are we still happy? Are we blessed? I always wonder. I know I was asking myself this question. That when we are going for a party. We are never in a hurry to run away from the party to go back home. And then I heard this voice in me. That it is the devil that doesn't like to see us stay in church longer. That is what the voice I heard. I don't know what you hear. Because I, I was asking myself this question. Why? When it comes to going to watch football, going to the movie, going to dinner, we are never in a rush to go home until they say, hey, we are about to close, please. Now start closing. You go to the Walmart, you want to shop and shop. Hey, we are closing... But to church, it becomes so difficult to stay for even one hour. Amen? Amen. That is just what I was talking, talking to myself about. So that's not you, us. That's for me. Amen? Amen. And so it's time we want to give unto the Lord. It's giving time. Blessing time. And there's a verse I want to read before we give. Let's not just give carelessly. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7. Let's not give carelessly. You know what happened to Cain. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 17. Let's give. Let's see what the Bible says about giving. Just one verse. I'm not preaching. So don't get upset with me. Amen. Second Corinthians 9 and verse 7. The Bible says. So let each one give us his purposes in his heart. Give us your purpose in your heart. Not grudgingly. Or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And the church says, Amen. Amen. God does what loves? A cheerful giver. And so lift up that offering and speak something. Speak a word on that offering. You can give by text, 559-205-7443. You can email, uh, you can give by cash up, uh, covenant, uh, dollar sign, covenant faith family. You can give through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash Covenant Faith Family. And you can mail your check to Covenant Faith Family, Church, 6269 East Kings Canyon Road, Fresno, California, 93727. So if you are online and you want to be part of this, do it from your heart and God will bless you. In this place, we've received testimonies. And this is a sign of what God is doing out there. And so if you do it, do it unto the Lord and God will bless you. Father God, we thank you for the substance you've put in our hands. You are the one who gives power to make wealth, as your word says, oh God, in Deuteronomy 18 and 8. And so Lord, we thank you because God, you've given us the power to make wealth. And we come before you, Lord, like Eli went to Shiloh, Lord, to worship you and to offer a sacrifice. We've come, Lord, 
with gladness of heart as we give not because you are in need but because we are walking in obedience receive all the honor and all the glory for you are good god in jesus name we give thanks amen amen and so come dancing unto the lord and give amen and don't forget at the end of the service to pick one fruit here to go and share with your family amen amen let's have a song real quick in jesus name amen he has done great things he has done great sons and your daughters have brought to you their offering with cheerfulness and gladness of heart Lord we present it to unto you that it shall come to you like a sweet smelling savour acceptable by you and Lord as you look upon their offering you will rebuke every devourer for their sake you will bless their hand and you will, and their heart the heart will yield fruitfulness even unto them father lord we thank you whatever they touch shall prosper their hands become a blessed hand their business become buoyant and fruitful their joy shall become full to the overflow they shall be like a tree planted beside the rivers of water their economy will not be determined by the unsteady economic of this world but shall be guaranteed by the unending wealth of heaven may their testimonies be full in the name of Jesus let's put our hands together as we celebrate this beautiful and wonderful looking choir they're doing, they're doing well they are blessed and they've been a blessing and how many of you like our background how many of you love it you love it let's put our hands together as we celebrate the vessel the lord used, brother mike brother helvin and um, our covenant mother and everyone that was used to do this may god beautify their life in the name of jesus now what is coming up in the next uh, few days 10 days 12 days ddc 2020 i'd like you to just lift up your hands and just uh 
and just bless these flyers that they become a tool in the hand of God to draw men and women into his presence because in the presence of multitude is the king's honor that men and women will come to honor God and to be blessed as they show up upon this mountain that this flyer will draw men even out of their out of where they hold they are hiding and plant them in this, in Zion where they can be delivered and they can begin to possess all their possession so shall it be in Jesus mighty name amen and you give that to them so that you take a few you said we'll be getting more coming in so there will be more coming in but let's share this just use it to drop it on go to go to walmart put it in cars go to at your place of work drop it you know whatever you can do to promote this do and god bless you as you do so in the name of jesus and uh, on that note to next saturday that will be on the 17th we will also be gathered and that is why it is even important for us to all have our ddc flyer the uh, ddc t-shirt you like that that's beautiful that is very beautiful breaking limits so please see mama next saturday we want to do some community outreach to to evangelize our neighbor, neighborhoods as much as we can and it will be good for you to put on this as you share this and uh, invite them and uh, tell them when they come they may end up going with a free t-shirt like this that you are wearing hallelujah so just invite them to be a part of the conference with the flyer next saturday some of us might be here in church if you cannot come be in your neighbors just share the word if you are at work continue to share the word but god's name will be honored in your life as you do the work of god in the name of jesus so that is just a mere ten dollars but why not you can give more to bless the work of god in the name of Jesus again the Lord just spoke to me that we should also prepare for the conference a seed a destiny fulfillment seed I thought I would share it next Sunday, but I felt it is important. Just lay in my heart right now. There was something Abraham did that provoked heaven, that made God to swear. He made an oath. When Abraham took what was precious to him, and brought it to the altar of sacrifice at Mount Moriah. And the Lord said, even though I promised you in Genesis chapter 12, but now that you have done this thing in Genesis chapter 22, that in blessing, you will be blessed. And the, the, the destiny of Abraham, of Abraham became fulfilled based on the provocation by the seed the sacrifice he brought so it is called ddc 2020 sacrifice it's a sacrifice that you are bringing a sacrifice is something that touches you a sacrifice is not you bringing a, the widow's might if she brought one it, it might but that might touched her what you bring should touch you what you are sacrifice is a sacrifice remember in um, psalm 126 
verse 4 and 5. He said, He that goeth forth, bringing precious seed, weeping. Even though you are bringing it with joy, but you are also weeping because it is, it is hurting you. That is what sacrifice is about. But he assured you that you will doubtless return with joy. You will doubtless rejoice, return with joy and rejoicing. And the Lord has declared this conference as breaking limits. <laughs> Brethren, <laughs> an end has come to everything that is limiting your life and destiny. And hand has come. And you are bringing a sacrifice to put a seal on it. So I want you to start planning towards it. Start planning towards it. Lord, what is that sacrifice? What is that? Start praying to God. What is it? Because God spoke to Abraham. God told him, go, give me your son, your only son. Your son, your only son. He was the one that you love. Some might have to say, okay, I'm selling this stuff. I don't, I'd rather give it to God. I'm doing this, something that touches you. Hallelujah. And now you have put God to a covenant. A covenant that will never be broken. He said, gather my people in Psalm 50 verse 5. Gather my people. Who has made a covenant with me by sacrifice? And I'm speaking to those of us that are also connected via the live stream. That you can bring a sacrifice to God. That will ensure that your life will never be limited by any forces in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. As you take heed to this instruction. Like I said, part the next Sunday is a continuation of this of this um, series, and you will be talking out about covenant responsibility through the help of the Holy Spirit for you to fulfill your destiny. And I know that as you take up those responsibility. God, you, your life will no longer be a mockery for others to, to, to joke with in the name of Jesus. Let's rise up as we close the service. So make sure, don't leave without ensuring you get your t-shirt. Don't leave without ensuring you get your